We're here today to learn about lean manufacturing. So what exactly is lean manufacturing? The best way to answer this question is to take a step back and look at the broader history of manufacturing. We can roughly divide the growth of manufacturing into three sections, the age of the artisan, the industrial revolution, and modern times. Let's look first at the age of the artisan. Humans have been manufacturing things as long as they have been on Earth. At first, man's ability to produce was mostly limited to his own muscle power and the heat of fire. However, man soon figured out how to use animals, water, and wind power, as well as simple tools like levers, winches, and pulleys. Early artisans were called craftspeople, journeymen, and apprentices. They worked at home or in small shops, using hand tools or very basic machines to make textiles, shoes, and other goods. Each item was made by hand and was unique, and artisans usually marketed the goods they produced. Manufacturing changed significantly during the Industrial Revolution, which began in England in the 18th century and lasted until around 1840. Instead of workers producing items by hand, machines were created that produced items much faster and with much less human effort. For example, this mule jenny, or spinning mule, allowed a single worker to produce high quality thread much faster than was previously possible. Advances in steam engine technology also took place and allowed steam to become a prime mover for many industrial processes. The factory system also came into being during the Industrial Revolution. This brought large numbers of workers, including women and children, together in the same building. Manufacturers started using new basic materials, including iron, steel, and cotton, and new energy sources like coal, electricity, and petroleum. All of these advances significantly sped up the production of manufactured items and the capacity to produce. Next, we enter modern times. One significant event in modern times was the increasing availability of electricity. Not only did electricity provide light and movement, it also allowed new manufacturing technologies like processes to produce aluminum, plastic, and rubber. Starting in around 1880, plants with electric lights could operate on 24-hour shifts instead of just during daylight hours. Until the end of the 19th century, work on the shop floor was coordinated based purely on experience. Supervisors or owners set the wages, and wages were often as low as they could get away with. Production quantities were based on the mood or speed of the worker, and basic cost accounting was the only mathematical element on the shop floor. There was little understanding of the relationship between work, time, and cost. Fortunately, the idea of scientific management arose in the early 1900s. This involved task management and time studies, standardized work, formal training, industrial engineering, and other techniques that improved efficiency and productivity in manufacturing. Another significant development was the assembly line, where manufacturing steps are performed in close proximity by different workers, with the workstations arranged in the sequence of the manufacturing steps. We generally consider Henry Ford the father of the assembly line and mass production. Other innovations of Henry Ford included making parts interchangeable, making parts easier to assemble, and reducing the number of actions required to perform a task. With these innovations, Ford was able to produce a Model T in just two hours and 30 minutes, and they were able to reduce the price from $850 in 1908 to less than $300 in 1925. Other automotive manufacturers soon began to copy Ford's techniques, and these techniques were put into use to meet the massive demand for military hardware during World War II. So now we're at a point in time where we have complex machinery powered by water, steam, or electricity. But in almost all cases, humans are still needed to control the processes. In the 1950s and 1960s, simple computers were used to control parts of processes. 
As computers became more sophisticated and smaller, computer-controlled machines, like robots, were developed. Around the same time, the Toyota production system was developed in Japan. The main goal of the Toyota production system, or TPS, is to provide the customer with the highest quality vehicle at the lowest cost with the shortest lead time. Two key concepts in TPS are just-in-time and Jadoka. Just-in-time refers to the concept of making and delivering just what is needed, just when it is needed, and just in the amount needed. Jadoka is the idea of building quality into the manufacturing process, so only products that meet specifications are passed to the next process on the production line. Also included in the TPS are standardization and stability. Standardization is performing work in the safest, easiest, and most efficient and effective way. Stability means you can produce consistent results over time. We generally consider the TPS the precursor of lean manufacturing, which is why lean uses some Japanese terms like Kanban, Muda, and Kaizen. By the 1970s, Toyota's Japanese automotive plants were significantly outperforming plants outside of Japan, and Western manufacturers, and not just automotive manufacturers, slowly began to adopt TPS and lean techniques. In the years that followed, lean has become commonplace in manufacturing and has been applied in other industries like healthcare and software development. So exactly how do we define lean manufacturing? Multiple definitions of lean exist, but we'll focus on this one. Lean manufacturing is a systematic approach to identifying and eliminating waste, or non-value added activities, through continuous improvement by flowing the product at the pull of the customer in pursuit of perfection. If this definition doesn't make complete sense to you right now, don't worry. By the end of the day, you'll see how it all fits together. So what do you need to do to get lean? Lean manufacturing involves techniques and practices like those listed here in the House of Lean. Stay tuned for more. We'll talk about all of these techniques today.